to Community Storytelling. I'm Lisa Chrysler, so glad to be with you. Today, Linda Lester, I love you. Lester Square <laughs> is our big sponsor, and this wonderful artwork behind me, these canvases are from Jacos at Jacos Art House in Los Gatos. Beautiful, aren't they? Such colors. And I want you to meet my friend. You may already know her, but I just got to know her a few years ago, and I want to share because she is one of the most amazing women I know. Allison mm. Jones Thompson, and now you're saying, oh, I know her, I know Allison. Hi. Hi, Lisa. I Thank do get, you for having me. I do get to call you my friend. You do. We go back. We do. And we'll get we to do. that. Yeah. So I don't even know where to begin, but I am going to start with how I met you. And okay. I met you, I was on the marketing committee at Cancer mm -hmm. Care Point before right. it became anything. It was just right. a dream. Exactly. You were there before even me, and then you kind of ran the board, and mm -hmm. you've been it all. I have. I've been involved with it for since it's before we opened up our doors, since we started building it, the idea, the concept. And I remember we opened our doors October 2013th, our official opening. And since then, this past year, we served um, shy of 2,000 clients. And we provide services for, I, I say psychosocial support services, so they're the non-medical cancer treatments. We don't deal with that. We deal with just where are you at yes. the time. We treat people wherever they are on their cancer journey, from the moment of diagnosis, right on through to if they have recurrences, to survivorship, which is really where you ideally want to be. And that's just how you work with people that are learning to cope with their new life. And this is a new normal. And we help them with that journey because there's, there are no textbooks on this, on how to how to live life now with this cancer diagnosis. And, and, and I think that when people realize and recognize they fought for their lives, that every day is a gift, but every day can also be a challenge. Yes. Well, and you work also with the families. We do. It's, it's we a do. whole unit that sometimes comes to 40 see 40% of our clients this past year were caregivers. And that's really a group of individuals that we often forget about but they're the ones that are carrying the ball at home, carrying yes. the emotional stress, the financial stress, while the other individual's job is to really get better. And they're carrying right. the weight of it. So we, we work with them, helping them understand this new normal as well. And we, I, I always say we, I'm sorry, <laughs> we have a wig bank. We do have a wig bank. We have nutrition, we have massages, we have yoga. We have all of those. We have support groups. We have programs for survivorship programs, family caregiver programs. We also offer one-on-one -on -one services. So individuals that um, are struggling with, how do I go home and tell my family that I've got this diagnosis? And we work with them, or they're having challenges along the way. One-on-one, -on -one, we help them where they are. We meet them where they are, and we call them clients because we want them to check their cancer at the door. When they walk in, it's about them, and it's, them and as it's an individual. a lovely office. It um, is. I can't even call it an office because it doesn't look like right, an office right. as a fireplace. Absolutely. And it's on Good Samaritan, where should we say it is? It is. It's, uh, it's on the campus. I look at it now as <laughs> sort of medical row. Yes. There are so many hospitals in that area yes. right now, and we treat clients from all of yes. them, regardless of where they've been treated, where they are in their journey, um, or income, because none of our services are at any charge to the clients. Yes. So we Room 402, we Unit, 402 Unit 402, Unit 402, 2505. Medical Samaritan offices Pride. or whatever the fancy name is for That's that place. Right. Which right. I've lived here forever, I should know that. And it's free, we haven't even said that. That's right. But one reason why it is free and how it is able to be free is we've got a huge event coming up in August. We do, and you know, I wanna just say, this community is so generous. We exist solely on the generosity of the community. And I mean the whole, if you will, Silicon Valley community because we treat people from all over Silicon Valley. And we are having our largest fundraiser is coming up on August 26th. And that brings in at least 50% of our annual revenue. Yes. And it's essential. That's what enables us to continue and move forward. It's an amazing day. It is. It's, it's an amazing day. day. And I have been involved with many <laughs> events and many fundraisers. And I must say, I've never seen one with so many sponsors and so many people and so much love at one event. I and agree. tears, too. Right. There's always a story that there brings are. you to tears. There are. So when is that and how can people get involved or buy tickets Absolutely. or whatever? Absolutely. So it's on August 26th and it is in Monteserino, 
And if they go online, cancercarepoint.org, we have an event page there, and they can see that and get individual tickets or sponsorship or donate items for our auction. Yes. And, and we'll, we'll see them there. Yes, we'll, we'll see, see them, them there. there. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, that's the cancer part. How did you even get started? Because you are involved with many cancer organizations. Yeah. You were involved with the brain tumor organization at mm -hmm. one time, too. Yep. How did this all begin? Um, I was one of those families. Mm -hmm. um, my father was diagnosed with cancer when I was in high school. And I was too young to even really recognize the impact it had on a family and that was way back in the ages where it was the c word and yes. um so we went through that journey without the support really without any understanding we didn't talk about daddy was dying or where things were until the hour of his death and so it was a very taboo topic is what i'm getting at and there were no support services um I actually received a scholarship to college, a very small one, but yet one from the American Cancer Society that made me think about the generosity of people helping people and what that could be. Um, I started my work in research, cancer research. I actually started a school in nursing, but then moved to the research and then spent many years in the corporate medical device industry, understanding the business side of it, meeting doctors, meeting patients and people that were involved with cancer. Um, and now I have the opportunity to give back and be a volunteer. So that's what I do. And I give back to the places where I feel I have some knowledge and um, where I feel there's a real need. So I have been doing that for many years. What would your dad say? Um, He's looking down. <laughs> that's a good question. Um, my dad was a volunteer firefighter. He was a fire chief. His life was about volunteerism. And um, I think he'd be really proud to see I'm giving back where I can. I wasn't necessarily a gifted firefighter. However, my sister was the first female volunteer firefighter in the state of Connecticut, but I didn't go that route. Yeah. So I went the direction that I, that I was able to. You know, my mom died of breast cancer at the age of 67, mm -hmm. and that was 28 years ago and was my best friend. I mean, every day, five o'clock, she and I. Yeah. And even this day, 28 years later, at five o'clock, I time. want that phone to ring, and it doesn't. Well, and th so my daughter's phones ring because I call them. Of course. But it's funny you were talking about volunteering because my mom was a, a huge volunteer. Right. And I don't know, I'm getting very emotional right I now. Know. I know, but know. it's true, it's true. Oh, so. I mean, I think that when you've got that, um, the community and you see the need and we've got this amazing community that we have right now it's about engaging people and letting people know that whatever it is you've got you, you can do something and everybody's got a little something different to give and um and it's beautiful the way we come together and it all keeps running well cancer care point is so lucky to have you wow. so lucky to have you and i'm lucky to have them actually you, well you know what i kind of feel <laughs> that way too i mean it's our other family it is because we are all together a lot and we know? make friends that and way. we make friends that way but i want to talk about you for a few minutes because like i said you are the most amazing person you were kind of somebody i look up to um i did google you and i did not <laughs> know this about you um and this will get you to cry rather than laugh in a second but 9-11 9-11 had an impact, of course, on all of us. I was working that morning, um, and you were at work. And, I was. And you had your coworkers come in and say, look what's happening. You were in Boston, yeah. right? I was in Boston. But 9-11 hit you a little differently than many of us. It did. Because? It did. Because 9-11 started in um, February of 1993. And, and that's when the terrorists struck and targeted the World Trade Center, the tower, and it absolutely took uh, the shaking I was on the 66th floor and when that hit you could feel it we were at lunchtime and the big decision was <sighs> what do you do what's going on with that and at that point I saw the black smoke coming through the elevator shafts and they told us to take your bags and go and um, we had to walk down in the dark stairs without any um, there were no lights in the stairs and we made it out. We got stuck on a floor. They're breaking windows. Um, we were crawling from office to office. Um, gentleman next to me had a heart attack coming down the stairs. Um, six people died that day, but that was the start of yes. terrorism hitting our country. And um, it took me two hours to get down and made it out, covered with soot, 
And um, so when the, actually that on 9-11 in the year 2001 when that hit, um, I felt like it was happening all over again. I bet. Well, and it was. And it was. And oh, to think that, to think that that was their goal and target the first time, um, it's beyond words. Had you already had your daughter? Was she born? At she was born in 94. 94. Okay. Because yeah. yeah, I was going to ask. That yeah. would put a, a yes. whole new meaning, a whole new meaning to that Absolutely. story, that escape. And yes. am I going to see my daughter and my yeah. husband and this and that? That's right. Absolutely. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I can imagine. And 9-11 uh, every year. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. sure. It's interesting to As go there and down. see it, to go and see it's now beautiful. The, the, the tribute. And they both, they have a tribute both to the 1993 event and to the 2001 event. Yes. So it's, it's really a nice tribute. I'm so happy to say I have been able to, to yeah. be there because it's it, worth it. it changes your life. It does. And it makes you think of things that you didn't think about before, even yeah. living through 9-11, but just being at the memorial right. in person. Absolutely. And every day is a gift. Yes. I mean, you still see yes. that, right? So speaking of every day is a gift, <laughs> you do a lot of traveling and by yourself. I do. Which I don't know. I, I don't know how you do it. Well, I do most of my traveling with my husband and family, yes. which is great. Um, however, sometimes you need a little alone time, a little me time. And we're not talking about going and to Capitola. We're right. talking about going around the world. <laughs> right. And so I have been fortunate, again, very fortunate to have the, the time that I've been able to get away and the wherewithal to look into different opportunities. And one that I've done twice now is the Camino de Santiago. A which pilgrimage. It's a pilgrimage. And there are many different trails to Santiago, Spain. And I have been there from through the French Pyrenees. I did that last year. And I walked for about 40 days. And this time I walked for about 30 days from Lisbon, Portugal, all the way up through and stayed in hikers' hostels, which is quite an experience. Um, it's not Los Gatos. It is <laughs> not Los Gatos. There were rooms with 40 people in it. And I got the top bunk number of times but that's fun it was really a lot of fun and sometimes at dinner you may find yourself out at a restaurant and you're the only American you learn a lot about yourself you learn a lot about um, who you are and what's special to you and what's special about the rest of the world I mean everybody that comes out there has a story why they're there and really unique stories and you should go out there with a microphone on the oh on the that would be fun. yeah it's really beautiful it's really beautiful but, but never lonely that's a lot of days no it's you know I find that um, I enjoy that time I think about you know where I am and the people in my life and um, count my blessings and meeting people and you know a lot of times you come back with great ideas and inspirations things you've learned learn a lot about how to do things a little differently I come back with a new approach to things, a little more patience, yes. a little more balance, a little bit more easygoing. Yeah. My family might not say so. <laughs> but you know, I, I can go to movies by myself, and I do mm. a lot. Um, I can do lunch by myself. I can't mm. do dinner by myself. When my husband died 11 years ago, mm -hmm. I went to, several months later, I went to Victoria mm -hmm. for a few days, right. and it was my first trip ever right. alone right and I was fine during the day because you know you blend in and nobody knows who you're with when you're sightseeing and mm -hmm. going here and going right. there but nights yeah. were difficult yeah. because I really did feel alone and it was the weekend Michael Jackson died oh. and but it was a grateful thing for me because I had something to watch on CNN right. all night long right. in my hotel room yeah yeah you know because I, I didn't feel comfortable being out right. you're out but you know I did a lot of business travel for so many years as well I mean, that was, you know, before that, you know, I was head of marketing teams for medical companies, and I was on the road a lot. So you learn how to spend your time, how to, how to enjoy that time, a good book. I take more baths when I'm on the road than anywhere else. Oh, just because for that you don't reason have time. alone, I should go. You don't have time. And they clean the tub <laughs> every day. Well, not in the hostels, do no, they? No, not in the hostels. <laughs> there were no baths in the okay, hostels. Okay, you were staying in finer hotels. I was happy hotels. to get a shower. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> but that I just find that amazing cuz like, you know, we're Facebook yeah. friends and I see your pictures and I say, "You're where?" Well, maybe you'll join me. You never know. We'll we'll you walk a piece know. of it. It you would be really know. lovely. How long have you lived in Los Gatos? I've been in Los Gatos now for 15, 16 years now. 16 years. What's your favorite favorite place? My favorite place I think is walking up um, 
Santa Cruz Avenue, seeing all the shops, seeing the people, and then going to the Sunday evening concerts. Yes. And the jazz in the plaza. Mm. Thank you, Linda Lester. <laughs> and she's an amazing person to give so much to our community. And we would like to get her on here, but yes. she's so amazing and so busy, we can't even right. get her in the chair. Right. But exactly. she is a wonderful woman. She is. She is a wonderful woman. But but so much of the, and, and you know what's really beautiful about it, is to see the new things that are going on, but I love the history aspect of it as well, truthfully, is to see what we do to to keep and maintain the pieces that we can remember, yes. the train station that's now up by the post office, the uh, the wonderful historical elements. Uh, because I come from New England, so history is, is yes. really a big part of New England. And to see the way that's being kept here is, is beautiful. Yes. And, you know, the photos, the old photos, I, I love it. My really history do. when I was a teenager, we would go to Santa Cruz, the beach, on Greyhound. We go to the Greyhound bus station right. because none of us, will, when we weren't old enough to drive, and our parents right, certainly right. wouldn't let us drive over the hill like that. But yeah, we'd come early and right. get get our ticket and get on the Greyhound bus. Exactly. Go over the hill. Exactly. But there's there's a lot of yeah. history in Los Gatos. There yes. is, and we yes. dine well here. Yes, you do. We eat and we very do. well. Yes, we <laughs> do eat well here. So I do a lot of that. Yes. <laughs> you have um, a favorite restaurant? I'm always curious um, to hear. Favorite restaurant? Um, well, we've been enjoying lately the little Wee Olive because we go and walk down there from their house and take the dogs. We enjoy Wee Olive. I think I need to go there now because yeah. I'm out of my Wee Olive. My yes. I'm out of my yeah. balsamic. <laughs> and, but but we love all of the restaurants yes. in town. Truthfully, you I can't mean, go it's wrong. Hard to, it's hard to say. I mean, we have such a, a choice. It's more about what type of food would you like tonight, and then choosing because we literally have it all here. Yes. Um, so it's just a great selection. Such international um, tastes here too. It just has been fantastic. You have a wonderful life. I and do. I'm so glad I'm, I'm I know you. I'm very fortunate. And I'm yeah. so glad I know you. Well, I'm, you. I'm so yes. pleased to know so you. So now you all know. You all know Allison now. Allison Jones Thompson. And yes, Cancer Care Point, the garden party. If you like to know more about it or get your tickets or whatever, you go to cancercarepoint.org. And uh, we'll see you there. And Allison, thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. And yeah, who knows? I'll go on the next pilgrimage with you. I'd love it. We'll see about that. <laughs> Community thank you. storytelling at its best, right? And you have a story. Would you like to nominate yourself? Nominate a friend. It's so easy to do. KCAT.org. And thank you. Thank you so much for spending some time with us right here at KCAT TV 15.